Any changes or questions? No? So we no longer have to approve those. So we'll just jump right into welcoming our new member, Elizabeth. Is it Bruning? Running. Running. Do you want to introduce yourself to us, Elizabeth? Sure. Um, I usually go by Beth to help us not be two Elizabeths. Mm -hmm. um, I'm mm -hmm. really excited to join the Arts Committee. I stay home with my eight-year-old and mostly volunteer at schools. I'm excited to start volunteering in the larger community. Cool. Oh, I do have well, welcome to oh, yes. the Arts Committee. <laughs> Thank you. Abby, do you want us to go around and inter introduce ourselves to Beth? That would be good. And maybe we can go around the table here first and then go to the Zoom. Sounds good. Okay. Well, you know me. I'm Elizabeth. Um, I substitute teach at Sock Trail Elementary and I love art. I recently published a picture book with you know, And um, yeah, I'm just excited to be here. I'm enjoying these pop-up art events that we're doing. So can't wait to work on them with you. <laughs> Hi, Meg. Um, I'm a graphic designer, and I've been on the Arts Committee for like six years. And she's the vice chair, too. Yeah. I'm Katie. I'm uh, on the city council, um, and I've been on the Arts Committee for five, four or five. Yeah, probably about um, that. And uh, I just think that this kind of stuff makes our city cooler. Agreed. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I I love this community. It's my favorite one of all. Yeah. How many are you on? I don't know. I forget. <laughs> a lot. Sweet. I don't know. Depends. Four to six. Depends, like trans. Like okay. yeah. yeah. Um, we know each other, but I'm Abby and have worked for the city for sixteen years and have staffed the arts committee the entire time that I've been here. <laughs> among other responsibilities. Sure, I can go next. Uh, I'm Sebastian. I've been on the arts committee for about a year and a half. I work for an arts organization and website called CodaWorks. We do um, events for artists, uh, calls for artists, um, art consulting, just like all, all things arts and public art in general. Uh, I applied to be on this committee after I submitted an idea and presented an idea for a project to uh, many people here in the committee at the time. And then uh, I was invited to apply and uh, serve. So uh, I'm ha very happy to be here and be a part of this. I grew up in Middleton, but I actually live in Madison right now. With my girlfriend, my cat. So Lee, which you Oh, sorry, I'm just listening. Um, hi, my name's Jolene Olson. I've been on the Arts Committee for about a year. Um, and um, I uh, work a lot with Michelle and Katie and Erin on the on the Art Walk. Um, and let's see, I um, live in Middleton with my uh, partner and, and his two kids. And we've got lots of animals. And let's see, I'm a product manager for a small software company. Um, and, but, um, oh, and then um, I, I guess my special intro area of interest is in like performing arts and, and music and whatnot. Um, I'm Michelle Phillips. I was previously the editor of the Middleton newspaper, and that's how I ended up on this committee about five years ago. And now I am the communications manager at the League of Women Voters of Dane County. Um, my area of interest is primarily kids art, or promoting kids art and art within the community, as well as the art walk is my my big thing that I'm really passionate about. And I have festival planning um, with other art festivals. And I have been chairing this committee for two or three years. And Meg has been my co-chair the whole time. Um, and so that is pretty much sums it up for us. Yep. 
All right. Well, we look forward to having you on the committee. What is your area of interest? What kinds are you kinds of things are you interested in? I'm mostly interested in making art more available to our community in general. Um, I have a lot of background working with kids specifically, so that sort of thing is important to me. Um, I have. Before, well, before I was a stay-at-home mom, I had an interest in curating and art history. So honestly, I'm just, I love art and I think that we should share it with everyone. So this seems like a place to be. Well, we are glad to have you. Thank you. Okay, so let's go on then to the master plan addendum. Do we have anything to talk about, Abby, with that? No, we don't have any updates, um, but I, we can give this, uh, well, actually, I don't know if the full addendum is printed there, but you can take that as a hard copy so that you have a uh, you. <laughs> current version of the priority projects. Um, we could probably take that off the agenda until we have something that we need to discuss. I know it's been on every every agenda for a while because we were talking about it intermittently. So I will um, take it off the agenda for March. All right. Sounds good. Well, then we can move on to art walk planning. Um, we have not met since our last meeting. Um, we have our next meeting. I don't think we've met since our last meeting, have we? No. I think we did, because I oh. missed that last meeting. Oh, yes, we oh, did. You're and right. then we met yes. right after it. Yep. yep. You're right. We did, because we discussed that's all right. the big things we discussed was the logo versus the t-shirts and merchandising. We did decide on that to go with Simona for the um, advertising and then keeping Broda's artwork for the t-shirts, stickers, tote bags, whatever we decide on for promotional materials. Um, and so let's see what else did we discuss specifically. We have, Aaron has been doing a bang up job on getting vol or, um, don donors, sponsorships, um, we, uh, are, these are, they're not all on here. There's a couple of others that she, I think that she needs to add still. And okay. some have not committed to a dollar amount. Um, so, uh, we are still plugging away with that. Donation letters just went out. Um, Aaron sent some in the fall. I just sent some. So they have until April 1st to donate. Um, that's when the bulk of our advertising starts is after that time. And, you know, we'll want to put their logos on if they are at that donation level. Um, so that is, we have about, I think, $2,800 committed now, somewhere in that neighborhood. The total should be on the underneath. All right. I should have brought a mouse in here. <laughs> Yeah, 2850. Yeah. So we're doing pretty good so far with that. We also, this is very exciting. We also have, I think, 24 or 25 artists that have signed up. We had 36 total last year. So I'm hoping that number grows. Um, if you should meet anyone that you want to invite to the art walk, um, you can get more postcards from Abby there or from the city. Um, city Hall has a bunch of them. And you can disperse those when you go to art festivals. I forgot to take them to, with me to the Garden and Landscape show last week. I didn't expect there to be as many artists there as there were. Um, but I did get a couple of names that I sent to Abby. If you have artists that you'd like to uh, have an email sent to, then those can go to those emails can go to Abby as well so they can get on the mailing list. Um, let's see. We um we are working on Kids Corner, um, and I don't know, Elizabeth, have you and um, Aaron gotten together to talk about yes. that? Yes, we did. Uh, she said something about a chalk artist has been hired. Do you, is that sound correct? A chalk artist? Um, yeah, she has a chalk artist that will be there, and then we'll, we'll have Melanie again. Melanie will be over in the main area, and the other talk artists will be in Kids Corner, which I am leaning toward putting over behind the stage because it's nice and shady back there. Oh, okay. The Kids Corner area? Yeah. Erin was saying she wasn't sure if we'd put it over by the food trucks or 
I don't the know. The food trucks are over there. Oh, they are. Okay, so over yeah. near. So the food okay. trucks are on. So we have artists on one side of the canopy, and okay. then we have um, the food trucks on the other side because the electricity is facing the brewery side. Okay. And then behind the brewery, there's it's very shady back there. Um, and we don't really, I mean, Meg and I parked back there, but we don't really let anybody park back there. So yeah. Meg and I could park elsewhere and um and maybe Jolene parked there last year too, but we could kind of I thought we could kind of set that up back there. Okay. Um yeah. Yeah. but also yeah. the balloon twister is confirmed. Okay. Um and so Neil, the real deal, will be coming. He is at Mustard uh, National Mustard Day every year. Um, and so I confirmed with him he'll be doing four hours, um, two morning hours, two afternoon. And that's in the kids' corner, Michelle? That's in the kids' corner. And okay. so the balloon twister is Neil. Um, uh, I can't think of his Neil, last name. The real deal. Okay. Um, and you said he's coming two hours in the morning, then a break for an hour, and then two more. Is that right? Yes. He is coming from 11. I believe he's coming from actually 11 to 1, and then he'll have an hour break, and then he'll be back from 2 to 4. Okay. Yeah. I think that's – I'll have to look at the email. but And he's 450, Abby, if you want to – plug that in. Aaron and I discussed whether we could afford him. We do have some specific kids corner donors. And so we decided that yes, we could afford to add him in for four hours. Um, will you, okay, let's see. Art working will be coming again. I don't have confirmation. They will be the same price as last year. Um, I talked to Lance about that a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't have hours specifically for them yet, but it will be four hours. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, I have not. I was in a discussion with um, Mary Beth Ponty about um, Inspiring Hope coming. She wants to come. She has not confirmed. I don't know if they'll be here this year or not, but they'll have a double booth space if they come. Um, let's see, Broda has, Broda in his booth also will have a musician, correct, Katie? Yeah, they have a, a small band, and um, he was actually asking about electricity. Is there any way we can get him electricity? I know that was an issue. Well, I'm not sure how, because we can't put him right next to um, the terrace, because I'm afraid they will conflict with the stage sound. Can we tape a cord down? We could. We could run an extension cord. We could put him, you know, on that side and run if along it, the extension cord if we taped it down. If it crosses a public sidewalk, we need the ramps over it. So it's I was thinking of crossing the parking lot entrance. So... But it still is going to cross that sidewalk. Yeah. We just need those little, you know, those little like yeah. ramps. Yeah, those little black ramp things. Uh, I don't know if we own any at the city. I'll have to check. I'll uh, Let me ask Jim Shalander, our building inspector. There was a question, too, um, in our meeting, Abby, about whether or not you have the harmonica hookup. Did you get some harmonicas for those? Oh, we have um, we have harmonicas that are in storage right now at the Stonehorse Green closet. I don't remember. Do you remember how many Eric had left over? You remember we did that? Yeah, I don't harmonica. remember how many we had left over. Does it matter if they were brought on for Stonehorse and we're going to request them for Art Walk? They were donated by make music madison so we or make music national make music so mm -hmm. we might just want to buy them just to be sure and then buy them do from... harmonicas again for music oh buy day. them separately from, yeah i'm from thinking, corner where we might want to yeah do you have a connection where we get them or do you want eric to get them um if he sends me like ones that would work well 
I don't like need to link. put work on you if you if you would like. He's happy to do it. Well, it's just easier for me to like buy it so that he doesn't have to go through the reimbursement. reimbursement. That takes forever. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So it's just a little easier, but I wouldn't know. I would want to make sure that there were good quality mm -hmm. work well for his purposes. Mm -hmm. How many should get? Do you want to get a quote too, Katie, so that we can talk about that at um, the next art walk meeting? Yeah. Um, Aaron mentioned harmonica lessons and that there'd be a quantity of 100. Does that sound correct? This is what when I talked to her, she said that sounds the first like 100 lot. people. That's what, so I'm, I'm not sure. Cause I wasn't at that meeting. Well, it sounds we like, didn't, I didn't think uh, it was that many, was it? No, I thought that's what she said was the first I'm, 100 people get a, or something. Oh my, I, I would guess more like 25. Okay. That's why I was questioning. Okay. So 25, but I'll make sure he tells me what quantity okay. he wants. And let's bear in mind that we do get a pretty big crowd at Art Walk. Um, yeah, it'll be so, more than make music for sure. Yeah, Just make music is like. Yeah, I mean maybe we event. can. Yeah, I'll 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 let him know that it's it's more people than than make music. Okay. Yeah. And then would you find out too, Katie? Would you ask him to find out if we buy a quantity of them if there's a price break? Sure. Um. Because I'm I'm concerned. I mean, I think we should have a minimum 50, but I don't know if we need 100. However, we can, you know, I we can use them next year for something else if we have to. Okay. Was the bubble ones we were talking about? I would just need to get, um, right, um, the, what do you call it? Uh, pipe, cleaners. pipe cleaners and beads right? So with that, do we have a budget for that out of the kids corner or do I take that from pop-up arts? I don't know how that works. You, I, would, I would send a link to Abby so that she can order it again. With, uh, reimbursement with the city is a hassle. Okay. And so it's easiest just if you send a link to Abby and then um, she can order it with their credit card. Does anybody have any idea quantity? I mean, pipe cleaners are probably pretty cheap. Yeah. So I can get a lot. But and we do I, have a bunch, I think with the kids art, don't we? Yeah. So Aaron's going through in the next week, all of the supplies that we have left over from last year to kind of know what we have, but then I'm supposed to order whatever else. Okay. How many pipe cleaners are required to make one wand? I think it's just one long one, like oh. if you have long ones, and then well, you just string the beads on and you can. Yeah, I think you want to reinforce the handle, right? Right. So maybe we choose maybe a the couple. second one around. Yeah. I know I have to experiment before we do it. Yeah. Maybe two of them. Pretty cheap. Okay. Just order a lot and then we'll use them for, for something else. For yeah. pop up art. Okay. But yeah. You don't need them all. Okay, what else did you talk about? We kind of got sidetracked talking about some of the other people that were coming, but what else did you talk about, Elizabeth? Um, let's see. Yeah, basically making bubble wands. Um, she mentioned something about, are, are we interested in getting face painters? But I haven't heard if anybody's been contacted as far as a face, does somebody have a connection to a face painter? That was the other. Do, do we want face painters there? I think a face painter would be fun. Um, I do not know anyone specifically. So maybe just when you're out and about, if you see somebody, someone sees someone that they like, maybe get their information. Do um, it at the carnival. Or you could. Like even we've done it. I mean, it was just. Oh, it was just, it's just, just the parents volunteer. volunteer okay. You know, to do face painting. Okay. So. Um, didn't the library have like a glitter tattoo thing a while ago? Oh, I don't We know. could ask them. That's a good idea. Um, Amy Perry probably knows. Yeah. Library. Um, do you want me to sure. reach out and ask her? That'd be awesome. About glitter tattoos, because I know that was a lot of fun and they had a big line. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. Yes. Sounds good. And that fits the bubble the bubble mm -hmm. theme party pretty well, too. Glitter. Oh, yes. Absolutely. 
So um, does anyone have any other ideas that they want to throw in for the kids corner? It's a lot going on. Yeah, a kids corner. Like a lot. Well, we're filling quite a few hours of time though. So we want to make sure that we have, you know, everything, we have stuff spread out throughout the whole day. Um, I mean, I'm planning to be there pretty much all day, except for maybe a lunch break um, at the kids corner. And so I can help, you know, people make bubble wands and stuff like that. And then just, you know, I don't know, as these different artists come in, check in with me or whatever. So that's my plan the day of. Okay. Um, well, we, I mean, I think that if we come up with someone else, we can, you know, toss toss something else into the mix too. Um, okay, so do you, Jessica is no longer, um, as you know, on the committee. Do you, um, will you be available, Elizabeth, at 1230 on the 23rd to join us for our meeting? I'm not because I'm currently substitute teaching. Some of these I get scheduled okay. even school starts. And so that one I'm definitely, I know I cannot make at 1230 on Friday. Okay. So. Um, maybe the next meeting then that we schedule for Art Walk should be an evening meeting so that Elizabeth can join us and um, that would be great. we can discuss. And then Beth, if you want to help with, if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity within the committee and you want to help with the kids art, then, you know, well, you're welcome to work with Elizabeth and Aaron on that if you want. Sure. Definitely. Uh, no pressure, but just if you want to do that. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? We talked about the bubble party, so I'll let you guys talk about the bubble party, but was there any other thing that we needed to talk about with the art walk? I don't think there is, because the music and the food and everything's already been booked, so. Okay, so Katie, Jolene, whoever wants to talk about the bubble party? Yeah, um, Jolene, do you mind if I go with a question oh, please first? Please go for it. Yeah. Um, so Zuka Pilates, which is my company, was um, talking about sponsoring it. And I have a maybe an indelicate question for our city staffer. Oh. Um, so if I sponsor the party, am I allowed to buy all of the bubble supplies and then just not make the city own them? That's my spin, but I get to take it home at night if I don't, if we don't use it, if I buy it all. I would think so. Yeah. If I buy the bubble machine, no I get to that. own the bubble machine if I bring it and loan it to you guys for the day. Yes. So then, then we're not going to have to throw the bubble formula away. we we'll put a top on the buckets and I go home with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that solves like the, how do we get rid of it? Cause I'm just going to use it for the 4th of July at my house. Oh, fun. Oh, well, that's fun. We're all, You're all welcome. <laughs> <I'm> all in <laughs> it sounds great. I do, I do totally want a tour of your house. You've done so much work on it. So. Oh my God. <laughs> Still Next so much to do. <laughs> so much to do. I'm happy to sponsor, uh, to have a meeting. Um, okay. So, so then what I will do for my donation is I'll just come up with a dollar amount that I'm going to use for the supplies. And then anything that I am not going to buy will have to come out of our budget. Does that sound tacky? Yeah. Okay. No, that sounds great. Okay. So Do I'll buy a dollar amount on, than, like whatever. The no, because I don't even want clients. <laughs> I'm not even shopping for more clients, but you know, whatever. I'll I'll just I'll talk to you guys later about that. But that if that's kosher with you guys, it's kosher. Then we don't have to like. Where does the bubble machine live in the city? Yeah. Does it go to the mock? <laughs> <laughs> so our streets crew can play with it. Yeah. 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 I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. All yeah, right. That would be awesome, Katie. Thank you. Jolene, do you have anything else? 
I have to confess, I haven't done much since uh, the last meeting on this. I, there's not a ton to do right this minute. Um, right. Let's see. I think, um, oh, you know, I haven't heard from, uh, you know, any other potential sponsors. So I think, you know, this, 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 what we're working on is, is, is great. And really, it's just putting together our song list. And, um, oh, I guess I did talk to... Um, um, Melissa about, um, like if we make our, um, our bubble towers, um, we were hoping to use some of the microphone stands as a base, you know, just, yeah. um, raise them up to the highest height and pre-make them and then just store them in that, um, stone horse green, uh, storage area so that we don't have to worry about blowing them up on the day of the event or, you know, any of that, cause that can be really time consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we can just have them pre-decorated or pre-made up. Um, so Abby, I'd probably need to talk to you or Melissa about getting, you know, into the space to store them, you know, that Friday. Yep, no problem. But other than that, no, no major updates um, from my end. Jolene, do you think we need a helium tank? Um, so we can have yeah, some groupings of bubbles around the the green. I mean, we can, we can use the sticks, you know, like there's, there's like, you can do balloon bouquets and things. Let, let's talk about it some more. Okay. I mean, I'm All not right. against it. It's just, um, I'd, be, I'd worry about losing them. <laughs> yeah. We can, we can save that for our working group. But the other thing Sounds that good. I'm thinking of is, um, I'm not sure who does the signage for the art walk. Is it? Like laying, yeah, like up innings. So I'd love something for a, a bubble selfie station, like maybe a, a big talk bubble. And then the Middleton Art Walk logo down in the corner so that the bubbles, the bubble selfie station is also representing us. Does that sound right, Jolene? Yeah, that sounds so great. So this will be big. So we're going to probably have to talk about that more because right. I, okay. yeah. Sign holder, we have this 24 by 36. So we might have to have something printed at like Alpha Graphics that's large scale. Yeah. Um, but why don't I research? I could research some images and kind of send them to you, and then we can get some prices. Cool. And that sound good? We're going to need one for Kids Corner too, a sign, right? That's yeah. I wrote yeah, yeah. Okay, let's not, get off, let's not get off on signage right now because that's in the future. Okay. So that's something we should be talking about at our subcommittee meeting anyway. Okay. Well then I'm done. Okay. I don't, I just don't want to get into a big discussion about signage, but that's something that we don't need to discuss in our general meeting. Yep. Okay. The only thing I'm going to add to this is that we wanted to invite the Midwest Ballet Academy to come and lead dancing because I know they've been wanting to get involved with something within the arts committee. And so we discussed this at our um, subcommittee meeting. And Abby, do you have a contact so that we could get a hold of them? Yes. Do you want me to reach out? Yeah, if you want. Okay. Would this be at the bubble night thingy? Yes. Okay. And just to confirm that the time that I typed into the spreadsheet at the last meeting is still accurate, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m.? Yes. Just so it was a I thought we condensed it to 5.30 to 7, but okay. I could be wrong. That's what I thought. Oh, did we? I thought, okay, yeah. 5.30 to 7. And we would want them there at the beginning because when DJ Bubblicious comes, <laughs> comes out and MC Sparkle. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So I think that's it, right, with the... Um, after party? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, it is. And thanks for heading that up. She's great. Yeah. Oh, Katie. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Thank you for. No, I'm just. Yes, thank you. For oh, <laughs> this is my jam. I can't wait. <laughs> I have um, the song list. It's being approved by 12 year olds in Minneapolis right now. <laughs> It's being edited harshly. So um, <laughs> hopefully it'll be a good one. <laughs> so it's not proud. 
<laughs> um, the other thing I want to talk about with the art walk and um, just real quick is we do need to um, get in contact with the apartments and make sure to, I'd like to set up a meeting, Abby, if we can, to talk to the manager, the owner of the apartment building where we were having issues of people coming out of the garage last year. Okay. Um, so that we can make sure that doesn't happen because I'm not going to be nice about it this year. Yep. Okay. Um, I will get that scheduled with you, Michelle. <laughs> and let's see, anything else that we can think of for Art Walk right now? No. Okay. So we are meeting again next Friday. Um, and so we'll have another update for you next month. Um, but we're just going to keep plugging away at it and hope for the best. Are you able um, to okay. Scholarships. Um, we need to discuss whether or not we want to do and approve um, scholarships that we have been handing out for the last couple of years on um, on awards night. And I think we last year gave two five hundred dollars scholarships. Is that correct, or were they two thousand dollars? Two one thousand. So $2, for a total 000. of two. Yeah. Okay. So we need to discuss if we're going to do that again. Does anybody I have a want question. To... So that comes out of the operating budget? Yes. And we don't need any of the operating budget for the art walk this year. We may, but we didn't last year. Um, so I'm hoping we won't this year. But it could always come out of the non-lapsing fund, right? Yeah. 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 The non-lapsing fund that could cover. Right. Um, I would suggest that we designate an arts committee member to wear a t-shirt and go to the event to hand, you know, to deliver. I think we did it one year and then I believe it was last year. We didn't have anyone that was able to go or it got scheduled last minute or something. I reached out to Susie who sent the request and she hasn't given me the date. Um, so I asked her for it, but I haven't heard back. I don't know if they've scheduled it yet. It just seems like if we're using it to promote the committee's work, then we should show up and show them what we're all about. So what month is it typically? Like May? Is it in May, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. It's. I think it's a, a week or two before graduation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I'm not certain about it's that. Shirt. Um, so... Do we want to continue this then and go ahead and approve um, $2,000 for this? We um, we yeah, have... I, uh, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all for it. Do you, should I make a motion or do you want to vote on it? Do, do we want to discuss yeah, it? Does else have something to say about it? You can make a motion, Jolene. Okay, awesome. Well, I move that we um, do the art scholarships again this year, um, same amount as last year. And for clarification, that's two $1,000 scholarships for a total of $2,000. Yes, correct. correct. I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that carries. And um, do we have someone who feels like they would like to represent the Arts Committee on awards night? Thing on what day specifically it is? Yeah, can we wait till it's a little closer? Yes, we can talk about it at next month's meeting. We should know by then when it is. Just up at the high school, I live very, very, very close that I can always pop up and do it really quick if you just need somebody to be a person. You can be a person. Be a, I can be a person. Yes. A well, we could send if we had like a city mascot, we could send the city mascot in. That'd be way better. <laughs> we, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> send it in around the neck of a cardinal or something. <laughs> um, okay. So scholarship we will discuss then next month 
um, who will be our representative. And thank you for approving that. I know that the kids really appreciate that money. Um, and I do think it's, you know, it's a good way for us to be involved with the community. Okay, so we are on then to RFQs um, for the Trailhead Sculpture. And that is Meg, I believe, that will be speaking about that. We don't have any updates, but we do have a meeting scheduled with okay. Kylie. Mm -hmm. And okay, if it were up to Meg, we would have already met with Kylie, but it wasn't up to Meg to get it scheduled. I'm sorry. She did remind me a couple of times. I just try not to be too annoying. To be delinquent in my duties, but it's, it's no, I don't think so. Now. Okay. I think it's just me and Sebastian. Okay, good. And Abby. February 26th. Yep. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. should have an update for next time. Yes. Okay. All right, then we look forward to your update. And let's go to pop up art. Budget right. is pop up art. Oh, yes. So um, do I just tell you what Aaron and I talked about so that we kind of have an idea? We were thinking $750. Is this doable? That's what we had last year. 750. So it's consistent. I talked to Aaron about it at plan commission Tuesday night as well. Um, I, I mean, we have enough in the budget and if the commission is willing to approve that amount. Sorry, I was laughing at the cat. Okay. <laughs> so the 750 would be great because we were kind of working out how many events we have and, and what kind of supplies we already have. And she's going through those to double check all of that. But we're kind of adding a couple events. So I can go through the list to kind of explain. But so like in June and July, we would like to do another partner with the music at Stonehorse Green. So I don't know if we have dates yet for that. So I'm looking forward to talking to whoever I need to talk to about that. I have some dates for you. Oh, you do? <laughs> okay. There's a it's it's not one of the music nights, but the there is a pride event that's being held on six eight okay. at Stonehorse Green from noon to and four. Noon to four. Okay. What day of the week is that? Saturday. Okay. It's the day after school gets out. Okay. Um, and the Girl Scouts are making um, pronoun pens. Okay. And I was thinking it would be cool if the Arts Committee wanted to pop up. Maybe there could be like a rainbow craft or something oh, like that. Oh, that's cute. I love that idea. And then um, <clears throat> also at your last meeting, you mentioned partnering at one of the library. <coughs> The airport, yes, um, at the ramp or something like that. Yes, and the owner of Capital Flight popped in this morning, so I asked him the dates. So he's doing a car show, and then they're doing walk the ramp in case you want to. Excellent. So we've got Friday, July nineteenth for rock the ramp. Um, it looks like Saturday, August tenth for the car show at the airport. I'll have to check. Um, I know. This is good that this is around the 19th because I'm out of town the last week of July. Okay. But I will be in town for this one. I cannot remember if I'm in town on the, I'll have to check my calendar for August 10th, but I can, yeah, I'll add these to my calendar. And then um, I also, I thought it'd be fun to partner with the library in the park because they bring the books, you know, and they're already advertising. So you already get a big crowd. Yes. And I talked to them when I went, took my kids to one of the events and they said, we'd love to collaborate with you guys. So it's just a matter of finding a date that they're already doing it and that one of us, a couple of us are available to pop in there. So that would be sometime in June or July over the summer. So between the Stonehorse Green, partner with the library in the park and Rock the Ramp, we have kind of those summer dates. And then nice. back to school, we're thinking like that week right before school starts back up, it's always nice to have something for the kids to do. And Aaron and I talked about maybe like two, we kind of scheduled four last time. That might be a little too much since we're adding the, all these extra ones. We, we might be able to, to do about two um, that in late August. Um, or what I was also thinking, and I don't know what you guys think is maybe that good neighbor, or is it is it um, where the police, what's that called? National Night Out? National Night Out. That might be a good crowd there already that we could do a pop-up art event there. You guys think? I don't know when that is. I, I don't know what it is yet. It's usually the end of August sometime, like the third week of August or something. Yeah, I wonder, I think it's an, I think that the there's, it's the same date across the country, I think. Okay, because I mean, I live near there, you know, near that Lakeview Park and there's always a ton of people that come out that day and they do a good job of 
free food. There's already like just tons of stuff going on. That's so cool. I like the idea of piggybacking on. I, th I think it would be like a real easy, like fun win. I just don't know who we talked to about getting permission to do that. Um, is it the police it's department? One of the community service officers that organizes it. I don't know if it's Julie Carbon, Kim Wood, or the oh, other one. Kim is the SRO, right? Oh yeah, you're right. So how many dates do you have total? So between Stonehurst Green, one, partner with Library in the Park, Rock the Ramp, maybe this car show one, not sure about that. Um, the back to school, probably one of those and Good Neighbor Fest, that's seven. Then the library and I talked about on September 28th, they're going to hold their first ever Renaissance Fair. <laughs> so they, from one to four, at Lakeview Park. And so they were wondering if we'd like to have a pop-up arts table. It's like, a, of course that'd be fun, right? I think. And so so that would be number seven, okay? Um, and this would be, they're also looking for a fabric artist just in case any of you have any connections. They're actually, because they're gonna hire some artists to, to be available doing hands-on things and they're looking for a fabric artist. Like has to be. what kind of fabric art? I don't know exactly, but Amy Perry is the point person. So um, I can ask her a little more about what they're looking for. But this is date seven, so September 28th. And you guys help me think about that fabric artist. And then October, we have hunting for pumpkins. And December, we have, so this is nine, uh, candy cane hunt. Wow. That's a lot. Are you yeah. sure? That's not too many. To right. Laugh. So this is where I'm like, yeah, what, what do we do? Because I definitely have okay. Let's eliminate the car show because I don't think that that's as kid friendly of an event as rocking. Yeah, and it's an evening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we can get rid of that one right off the bat. Sounds good. Um, Jolene, do you have just chiming in here? Maybe if what I think that, you know, if you have the energy for all of these, I fully support, support you know, you, you going out and doing this, but you're going to want volunteers and you want, want volunteers from the committee and, you know, and maybe even. Sometimes, uh, well, any anyhow, so if you wanted to put out a list of your dates and then secure volunteers, maybe we, if there's, you know, like a, a date with a lot of conflict where you can't find any of us to help you out with it, um, you know, consider. Yeah, uh, I know that the they use the key club. I keep telling you guys this at the park and rec department, the key club members come and it's great because the, there's lots of extra, you know, high schoolers there helping manage projects like this like art projects so they were there for both hunting for pumpkins and candy cane hunt so it wasn't a big deal if it was just me because there were going to be all these other helpers so some of those are a little easy but yeah there are going to be dates like I don't know that I'm going to be in town in June and July all those dates so like I will definitely look to see if we can pull all these off and then uh, that September one though sounds so fun the renaissance fair I really would like to do that so we're looking at for sure the September October and December and then we just have to figure out how many we can manage over the summer, I think is the big question. Could you send an email with all the dates yes. to Abby? Yes. So I know you can send it out to everyone and then she could send it to the committee. Okay. And then how would we, we'd each have to respond separately back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless Should we do like a sign up genius? Okay. And then for ones that we don't have people sign up for, then we just eliminate yeah, I think National Night Out will be Wednesday, August 7th, and I love the idea of, like, partnering and you have a captive audience there, but I'm just going to say that there will be a thousand people at that event. So we might not have enough supplies. Yeah, I mean, okay. it is, like, it's a zoo. It's very, very busy. Okay, so maybe. It'd be an easy elimination. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so and then. You should be, you also also should be warned that Rock the Ramp has a ton of people too. Um, so is that something that we feel like we can pull off or? The library is doing Rock the Ramp. They, they've always had kids activities, but Matt was saying that they've never had like a special section for kids before. This year they are, they're going to have a bouncy house. Um, the library... I think the library is going to give away books that are themed around airplanes. Oh, fun. And so if we were going to do that one, it would be really fun to try to do like a paper airplane or, yeah. you know, something. Oh, that's a fun that would be theme. And that would probably be pretty easy to pull up with not too much expense if we were doing folded, right. you know, 
And yes. yeah, and if you even like had like an area where they could fly them or like made like a, I don't know, it'd be kind of kind of cute. Something along the theme. Okay. So yeah. Got so, a lot of ideas here. Yeah, could you do a sign up genius and then send it to Abby and she can Is sign up genius it. somebody that I've never done one? Or you can do something like, easy to you do. could do a doodle poll too. That's easy okay. as well. And on either one account. Okay. Sign up genius is easy oh, too. Yeah, they're they all really okay. easy. Yeah. I thought you had to yeah. be like a subscriber like our school does it. No. Well, you I just set up a free account to do the one okay. for the committee. Sign up genius. Okay. Yeah. Or a doodle poll. Either one, just so people can say. Okay, um, that sounds yeah. great. They're free. And then you need uh, an answer on the budget tonight. I don't think we, um, I don't think no. we need to approve it tonight. We should. We can discuss it if you want. Because um, I'm feeling like, it, depending on the amount of activities we're doing, I might need to. Because if we're doing nine, I'm not sure 750. Is Did enough. we have some left this year, though? Oh, no. Um, no supplies, way. yes. Um, but my Aaron also mentioned, and I'm gonna try to set this up sometime over the next few weeks, that um Brian Strasberg, former committee member, cartoonist, had mentioned that he has some supplies at his house that he wants to give away, but we don't we don't know what they are. So um we're gonna try to set that up again and see if we can go over there and supplies well I mean I guess the other thing is we can approve the 750 now and if they need more money later we would just have to revote later which is fine too yeah and I think you know like if we did paper airplanes at the airport even though there will be a lot of kids um paper is relatively cheap for a craft supply I think the candy cane hunt was the biggest expense uh, because you budget about a dollar per person and there's 150 to 200 people. So that alone is up to $200. So mm -hmm. that we have to save money for, for sure. But I have things like toilet paper cores that I save that we can, you know, make into projects. Like we can think creatively about how to reuse materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we I did some stuff at egg cartons last year at the Stonehorse Green. Where you could like, you know how you cut them into like small little pieces that you put like the pipe cleaners and you make them into nice. critters. Yes, that um, kind of So that's sweet. We did a couple things that had recycled goods. I'll have to go look back through my notes. I could send you some ideas. So that would be great. But yeah, I think that's probably a good, good starting point to yeah. move forward from. <laughs> yeah. Well, does someone want to make a motion then to... Uh... <laughs> A lot seven fifty for the pop up art. Sure, I'll move that we a lot seven hundred fifty dollars for the pop up art projects for twenty twenty four. I can second it. Okay, second by Meg. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. All right, and then you'll let us know if you need more money. Um, as we move forward, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yeah. All right, special events. Jolene, you got anything? Um, let's see, I missed the last meeting. So the only thing I was gonna update was the we did the open mic nights. They went pretty well, pretty fun. Um, and would probably like to do it again. Um this uh late spring and summer. Maybe we talked about maybe once a month. Um, and so uh, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, and, and we don't necessarily even need to supply any, uh, like last time we, we supplied a piano. Um, and I think that most people, uh, we, we could probably even just get away with using the sound system at um, the Stonehorse screen and, um, you know, Melissa's equipment and not even really have an expense associated with it. Okay. Well, then let us know if you okay. need money for that. Okay. Will do. All right. So bus shelter projects, you know, I just realized we've kind of been whipping through these and we haven't really been explaining what they are. So Beth, if you have questions, go ahead and feel free to jump in. Okay. Sounds good. I just following along this meeting, I think. Okay. 
So um, on the bus shelter project, I just sent this off to Alpha Graphics today to get our cost estimate along with all the high res photos. And um, I didn't really change anything from what the committee had previously discussed. I just needed to get them information about the specifications for the new shelters. So just to remind you all, um, this is John Q. Hammonds and Greenway Station or Greenway Boulevard northbound. We'll have artwork there. That's an older shelter. Um, John Q. Hammonds and Greenway southbound. We'll have the sunflowers on the new shelter at Allen and Lake Street, Allen Boulevard and Lake Street near Harbor. We'll have this floral piece. Um, I noticed that. We just literally installed the shelter probably a month ago and it already looks nasty. So we're definitely gonna need to, we might wanna get like some volunteer crews, like actually get community members involved to help us like scrub down the shelters the mm -hmm. day that they're, the day before that they're getting installed. I thought that that might be a fun like community engagement thing anyway. I have one of those squeegee things. I have one too. I do too. It's great I for window cleaning. Yeah, I have one too. Yeah, so like maybe we can ask the community to help be part of it. I don't know. I mean, we could also like pay and get it power washed, but mm -hmm. um, this is also a new shelter. This is at Century and Parmenter Eastbound. This might be the only one that um, I relocated because originally we were going to put this piece um, on the on a shelter at on Allen Boulevard near Lakeview Park, and that shelter, um, we were not able to get that one installed because we had some issues with the amount of land that we needed there in that location. So this is the one that I relocated, although I wanna give you one other option. So keep this one in your mind. This is right on Century Avenue, like sort of just east of the fast food restaurant that's on the corner. I think mm -hmm. it's on Hardee's. Um, this is at Branch and Pheasant Lane, Birds in Flight, on an older shelter just south of where Common Ground used to be. Um, this is a new shelter on Parma at northbound Parmenter and Lisa. Looks like this. Um, this is an older shelter, Century Avenue near the old Overlook Point apartments we'll get the butterfly wing um this is a new shelter at allen and lake street southbound we'll get the quilt on the opposite side of the street from harbor athletic club this is a new shelter downtown we'll get the downtown map looks like this um let me see here there's one more um, and this is an older shelter on Greenway Boulevard near the Indian restaurant, Daba. We'll get the vegetables. So the only real question that I have for you, because right now we're 50-50 split. Our funding sources were capital budget and TIP District 5 funding. Um, so we needed to keep a certain number within the TIP District, and we have that split now. But the only other idea I had was when I was out shooting a picture of Parmenter and Lisa northbound, I remembered that we also put one just south of this at Parmenter and Donna. And because Parmenter was the spine of public art in our master plan, I was wondering if you would prefer to, instead of doing this one, to put the crane at Parmenter and Donna so that they're sort of consistent along that corridor. Otherwise, I think it's ready to go. Um, options are well, what else century, do we... Century next to the old Hardee's, whatever that is. Yes. yes. King? Yep. Mm -hmm. Or Donna and Parmenter, which is kind of across next, from Culver's. From Trio Ramen. Yes. Yep. In that area. And I think in terms of ridership numbers, it's probably pretty similar. So I don't think one would necessarily be heavily, more heavily used than the other one. Um, 
I could see benefits of like having it on Century because it would be the only, well, no, there's one further up east on Century. But, um, you know, this area is kind of different. So I could see a benefit to keeping it there, but I could also see a benefit to like trying to consolidate more along mm -hmm. the spine of public art in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so my only thing yeah. is, my only thing is I feel like Parmenter might have more foot traffic. Yeah. Than Century. That's true because we have a multi use path. So there's more, I, more bicycles. And I like the continuity of, yeah, I do too. of keeping it together on Parmenter. Um, okay. Because when there is the possibility that we may do more of these in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll modify Kill Abby if we have to do more of these. To Parmenter <laughs> and Donna northbound. And um, really the only other thing that we're waiting for is just once we hear back from Alpha Graphics, we'll know the cost for the application. And we also know how much we have set aside for to pay the artists their honoraria. So we just need to make sure that the budget that we have secured for the project covers it um, because that was based on like a rough estimate at the time when we budgeted for it. So hopefully by the next meeting, I will have all that information. I'll probably plan to just sign off if we're within budget. If we're not within budget and we need to like cut one of the projects, then I probably would bring it back to the one of the locations. I would probably bring it back to the arts committee. And it has been a while ago since we got estimates, so it's likely that they may have gone up in price. Yes. Okay, anything else with the shelters? I'm excited about this project. I can't wait to finally have it come to fruition. Mm, very exciting. I would say if you do decide you want to do a community um, shelter cleanup effort, um, I'm happy to be involved in that. Um, so. Me too. Yeah, I have shelters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure, we so, can do a little bit. Save some newspapers and get, you know, get a big vinegar and go at it. <laughs> yeah, we would probably just need to like figure out the supplies that we would need and, you know, who's going to tackle which ones. And I think I would want to talk with AG just to like see like what's the level of cleanliness that you need in order to make sure that the application is done correctly and that there's not any, you know, residual stuff. So I'll I'm sure when they install it, they clean like the side that they're installing on before they install it. It's just whether mm -hmm. the other side. Yeah. Get, they probably wouldn't clean the opposite side because is it installed on the inside and then you see it from the outside? I think it's installed on the inside and you see it on the outside if the shelter opens towards the street. Oh. But if the shelter opens towards the sidewalk, because some of them do, mm -hmm. then they would be installing it on the outside. Um, the way that I stated it in the <clears throat> puzzle is, um, let me see here. Um, The artwork should cover the entirety of the back panel of the shelter. In some cases, the back panel will be street side. In some cases, the back panel will be further away from the street. Um, the front and the side panels cannot have any artwork because the drivers, as they approach the, the stop, they want to be able to see if there's someone waiting. So we can't block visibility into the shelter. The artwork should be visible from the street. Um, and then we we need the designer to lay the artwork out because there there's going to be some pain breaks in the artwork, and some of those <clears throat> some of those work better than others. Like I think like if it's a really abstract design, it doesn't really affect it as much as if you know like this one for example, um, which is Meg's piece. We wouldn't want like the pain break to go through like the center, so they're going to kind of have to use their best judgment as they're laying it out. Um, and then I'm hoping that they will actually like mock it up for us so that we can see um, how it's going to lay out. And they're also going to have to do cropping 
on some. So I would like to get those back from them so that I can share them with the artists just to make sure that they're okay with the way that they're cropping them because that's kind of a no-no for a lot of artists is that they don't really want their work altered. Mm -hmm. um, so I just like to get their buy-in and, and make sure everybody's okay with how we're going ahead because mm -hmm. it, it's been a while. I mean, I think some of these artists will be pleasantly surprised that we're going to actually finish the project and send them a check. <laughs> so that'll be good. <laughs> yes, everybody will be happy to get paid, I'm sure. <laughs> I can't okay. wait to see them. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Invisible work, invisible earth, and quadrants. Do we have any updates on either of those maintenance projects? Updates. Is that a no? No updates okay. on that item. Uh, website and social media, we haven't really... I haven't really thought much about that since we last met. So I don't really have anything to say about that either. Um, Youth Center Art Projects. We um, are in the middle of the screen printing project with Artworking. Um, so in February, Lance Owens from Artworking and Alex Monty and a couple of other volunteers came and uh, did the drawing portion with the kids. Uh, Lance will take them back to art working and make the um, uh, make the um, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm sorry. I'm like not right. <laughs> um, he will make the plates for the screen printing so that they can print them. They'll bring in a bring the screen printing um, stuff in in March, and they'll be printing on tote bags, which actually arrived today at Art Working, so those are good to go. Um, they will be doing tote bags, and then Lance also has bandanas, and if they have time, they can make a bandana as well. And then the next one coming up after that, Julia is doing a two part cartooning, um, and then. That will, she'll be concluding it in May. So that will, we have that all set to go. And then after Art Walk, we'll get ready to start booking artists for next year. And then um, we can move on then to the best practices for committee members. Um, Ida was unable to attend the city's meeting, but Meg went to the meeting. Do you want to um, update us on that, Meg? Sure. I was kind of surprised when this, I just looked at the agenda today. I was like, oh, I didn't know I was presenting on this. But <laughs> um, I will try and do my best. Katie can also probably fill in because she was sitting next to me during the meeting. But um, it kind of goes with the last agenda item as well, where they had a meeting um, for the vice chairs and chairs of the committees to talk about um, kind of streamlining some committees, maybe consolidating. And apparently they're going to be drafting some onboarding documents, which would have been amazing when I joined the arts committee if I had that, so that you'll be able to like kind of know what role on the committee is. Um, but I guess what I should probably talk about is being on a committee, they talked about like the best practices. So um, one of the things you could look up is Robert's Rules of Law, I believe is what it's called. Um, and that they shared some document or some videos, but apparently they're really long and I didn't watch them. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions, you can go to the city website and look up like city code of, city code of conduct and there's documentation on there. Um, but just like a brief, example is um, when you're in a meeting, you have to stay on agenda. You can't talk about topics that are not on the agenda that are arts committee related. Obviously you can ask how people are doing, that's fine. But um, if it's another topic that's that we're working on and it's not on the agenda, we have to wait until it's on the agenda to talk about. Um, then they talked about quorum, which you probably already know about it's half of the committee plus one so we can't meet without a quorum and that also goes 
to talk about when we have working group meetings, like the art walk meetings, you guys cannot have a quorum in your working group meetings. So you have to make sure that you're under quorum. So, so that would be, how many do we have? Nine? We have nine. Okay, so, so that you could have four, four people fewer. on your art walk meetings. So it does, so just have to keep that in mind. Um, it's, otherwise it's an official meeting of the committee and we have to, it's not no you have to publish it, that it's happening. 24 hours open in advance. government transparency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the minutes and how we didn't have to approve the minutes. Um, oh, and then they also talked about not replying all on emails. So when Abby sends out an email, you do not need to reply all. You can just respond to her. And you shouldn't be sending out emails to the entire committee. You should let Abby do it. Because that counts as another quorum. <laughs> yeah, it can. Um, it's just it's it's basically. I mean, honestly, like I'm um, for the arts committee. It's lesser of a concern, but you still you should not do it for any city committees. Mm -hmm. But it especially becomes problematic if a committee is making a decision about an application that is before them, talking amongst themselves outside of a meeting um, or deciding how they're gonna allocate funding because all of that needs to be transparent and open for anyone from the public to be able to see all city meetings um, where decisions are being made um, with appointed members or elected officials. They all need to be publicly noticed a minimum of 24 hours in advance of the meeting. And there are very, very, very limited um, opportunities within state statute for closed session meetings. And it's really only for personnel items, um, negotiating uh, or acquisition of property if the city is looking to buy property for purposes of making sure that we're not you know, showing our hand when we're buying property, the state law allows us to go into a closed session, but the rest, everything is. And litigation. Oh, and litigation. Thank you. Yes. Is there anything else, Katie, that I missed? Um, one thing that we weren't super clear on um, was that the city administrator was suggesting that we, well, A, we never tell a city staffer what to do or add to we we're, we're, they're asking us not to add to your workload because everybody's already working so hard um and then kind of in the next sentence or two was saying you know have the city staff person what was it yeah i asked him a question about i think it was the working groups right because yeah. abby's not on all the working group meetings right but yeah and then, have abby do all of the email communication for the working groups yeah it's like, so we were like wait, wait we're not supposed to involve her but now she has to be involved so i don't know yeah i hadn't heard that that was a little confusing but yeah i think maybe we're just a little bit unique because i'm not sure all the other committee committees have yeah so if you're cool with the way we're conducting yeah. it so just yeah. so you know beth we have like well we're kind of narrowed down to like art walk right now but we have a couple working groups um that meet outside of these meetings to get some of the, like the nitty-gritty stuff done and then like report back to the arts committee so at the moment i think we only have art walk and the rfq for the half percent maybe we had a maintenance one and we'll pop up our we'll pop another up. working group yeah so we have like three right now okay. and it kind of just comes and goes based on what projects we have working. So, so there is times that you're volunteering on um, these separate things outside of the normal monthly meeting. Okay. So like this meeting, like if we had something on the agenda where it was a hot topic, like we could have 25 people show up from the public and sit here and watch us. Like that doesn't usually happen at the arts committee but we do record the meetings and we publish them on youtube the city's youtube channel yeah so all that transparency mm -hmm. um and i was calling working groups subcommittees 
but we're calling them more. I know. Now. Well, I remember at one point we were in something <laughs> called subcommittees, and I don't know if it was you or Rob. Somebody had told us not to call them subcommittees. Yeah, not a committee. Our former city administrator okay. um, decided he really didn't like that because it sounded like it was a formalized Another committee. committee. Okay. Um. So we started referring to them as work groups. And they're really, I mean, this is much more of a working hands-on committee, uh, similar to like the city's sustainability committee. They are very similar in that way that they'll have three or four working groups. They are, you know, moving projects forward, bringing them back to the committee for a formal vote. But then there are other committees, many, in fact, most, are more policy oriented where we're just taking something and we're asking them for their feedback and their recommendation, but they're not really doing work outside of the community. I think that was it. Yeah, I think so. And I then think... like the last agenda item kind of rolls into it. So I think Abby's gonna take that. Well, does, yeah. first, does anyone have any questions about any of the things that Meg and Katie just talked about? No, just that I need to email you though, like if I want to do a sign up genius, I email Abby oh, and you'll email the whole group. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, I do try to, I have two email signatures and one of them says, please avoid replying all in order to comply with open meetings law. And I try to change my default signature when I'm emailing my committees to that one. That's just a reminder um, to not reply all. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so then on to, was there anything else? Any other questions? I'm sorry. Okay, so then on to our last agenda item. Okay. I'm going to try to share this again so that we have the three questions that we were asked to weigh in on here. All right. So the Committee of the Whole had a meeting and they were also discussing streamlining of committees and commissions. And um, they asked our staff to pose these three questions to each committee that we staff. So the first one is evaluate the committee liaison positions. If your committee has any, are they useful or not? How would the committee improve or change them if they are useful? Um, a committee liaison is like, when um, you have by default a representative from another committee that interacts with your committee um, as a member of the body. So as one example, I staff the city's planning commission and there they have a standing appointment. One of seven members of the plan commission is the parks board chair by default. Um, they, the city has decided that it is good public policy to have someone that is advocating and representing public parks, it's very important to our community, on the plan commission um, so that as we're reviewing projects, we can have that liaison position. Um, I, you know, I'm trying to think if there's another example like that comes to the top of my head. Um, we we have in within our department we have the um, pedestrian bicycle and transit committee and we have a liaison from the Middleton area cross plains school district so it's actually a staff position but because like we feel that you know getting kids to school safely on foot on bike or on public transit in some cases um, we wanna make sure that we have that representation on the committee. So the arts committee doesn't actually have any liaisons aside from our council representative, of course. Um, so it's, I guess, throwing it out there to see if you think that having a liaison from another committee would be helpful. Um, and if not, we could just pass along. No, okay. Um, second question, frequency of meetings. Does the committee need to meet on a monthly base basis? Would every other month or quarterly work? And then I just noted that our typical schedule is third Thursday of each month 
as I am available because when I'm gone or doing something else, I usually will see if we can cancel our meeting instead of getting one of my other staff members to, to staff it. You feel like that's working well? I would like to stick with monthly just because we skip quite a few throughout the year. And I think with all the events and stuff we have coming up, we'll need to do that. Or like if we can't make quorum, we might need to reschedule them. So I think yeah. personally, I think we need to have enough monthly. going on that monthly is kind of important, especially leading up to hard work. Yeah. But I mean, like we could maybe come up with a policy where we skip every December. Like we don't need a December meeting, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe something like that, where if it's like near a holiday or I don't know. Like we're always slow in the winter. Yeah. That's true. Well, I think we should still have the option though. Like, yeah. You know, because we could have things we need to talk about. True. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, inevitably, there's going to be some months that I am going to be like, I'm sorry, I'm not here. And so I can't stop it. So, yeah. You maybe will end up having 10 meetings a year or something like that. Or if we need to reschedule because we have something really important going on, we can do that. Yeah. I don't try to schedule around my committees anymore for vacations because I have too many night meetings and it wouldn't work that way. So I just miss them when I take my vacations. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly what you should do. <laughs> All right. So the feedback is we want to continue to meet monthly. Um is what I'm hearing. And does the schedule of third Thursday of each month at 530, is that good for everybody still? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Last question, committee consolidation. Is there any opportunity for consolidation with another committee? Can't think of another committee that I works. I don't think so. Yeah, we have some um, city committees that are a little bit more straightforward. Like we had a stormwater, we had a water resources management commission and a stormwater utility board. So like those two are going to consolidate. I think it's possible that the parks board and the conservancy board will mm -hmm. decide to consolidate. Um, but I tend to agree with you that arts committee doesn't really have a another like that so all right well so what I'm hearing is number one is no number two is stick with how we're doing it now and three is also no yep okay that's our agenda cool. all right then are we ready to adjourn? Yep, you get to just do it. All right. Well, then let's adjourn. Thanks, Thanks everyone, everyone for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Michelle. Bye. Michelle. Bye. I sent you an email. Night Owl. Yes. Um, okay. Our mayor wants you to present at a plan. Do you, do you have some that you like sell at home? Yeah, I have hard copies at home. Oh, right. really? I saw your email right when I came I to get different. on the meeting, Abby, but I haven't had a chance to read it. I love this no reading. Yeah. So. I, I, I have just read Kylie's when I drive by it or whatever it's called. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, then I will see you tomorrow at the meeting. Pretty soon I'm going to have next. Person. Yes, I will see you on Zoom. Like yes. <laughs> All right. Are you writing and doing artistry? Yeah. Oh my God. The only thing that I don't know how to do is.